Happy Monday to you. It's Poe back again with episode three of Space News. This week we're taking a look at a few SpaceX stories, a couple stories from China, and the largest, weirdest looking plane you've ever seen. Strap in and let's prep for launch. Last week, we covered the SpaceX Crew-2 mission that sent four astronauts to the ISS. There have been reports of a close call during this mission. I wanted to cover this as there has been some misinformation floating around. Several outlets reported that there was a tense moment during the crew's trip to the space station when there was a call-out made about a potential impact with passing debris. The astronauts were told to suit up in case the possible impact became a reality. This ultimately ended up being a false alarm, and the Dragon spacecraft was never in danger of suffering an impact. Some media outlets have poured through the footage of the launch looking for a clip to pair with their article. Ultimately, they found a portion of the video where Dragon separates from the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. During this clip, you can see a small piece of debris pass between Dragon and Endeavor in the second stage. I'm sure they saw this and thought, this must be exactly what they were talking about or they just didn't care and thought it would be a good video to go with their story. Either way, it was incorrect. What you see in the video is likely just ice buildup that became dislodged during the separation event and posed no serious danger. Additionally, the tense false alarm that was talked about in many articles came during a completely separate time of flight. This was at 1.44 p.m. EDT, which was much further into their trip than when Dragon separates from Stage 2. Not only did pairing the video of the separation event show misleading information when put side by side with the articles, but it also sparked many who read the articles to question what did drift between Dragon and the second stage during separation. As mentioned above, it was almost definitely ice that had formed on the outside of the rocket and or spacecraft during ascent. You have to keep in mind how cold space is and the fact that fuel tanks on Falcon 9 have cryogenically cooled fluids inside them. We have seen the buildup of ice on every Falcon 9 flight. As a matter of fact, videos of the second stage MVAC or Merlin vacuum optimized engine have repeatedly shown ice buildup swirling around the nozzle of the engine on just about every launch. In the past, this has been used to try to prove that SpaceX launches are fake, as many flat earth believers will say what you are witnessing are mice climbing around on the glowing red engine nozzle rather than ice buildup. First, Obviously, they are categorically wrong. Second, do you know how quickly that poor mouse would be vaporized by scampering atop the nozzle of an ignited SpaceX MVAC engine? Faster than you can click the like button on this video. That's how fast. So unfortunately, for the individuals hoping the video showed aliens taking a look at SpaceX's technology, you're going to have to go talk to the Pentagon if you want to see some alien videos because this ain't it, Chief. Also out of SpaceX this week is news that Elon Musk is planning to continue upping the number of reflights on Falcon 9 boosters. According to an article from Spaceflight Now, Musk was quoted as saying, we've got nine flights on one of the boosters and plan to have a tenth flight soon with an upcoming Starlink mission. Elon's company Starlink is using Falcon 9s to put their internet providing satellites into orbit. Obviously this is a great way to test just how reusable Falcon 9 boosters are. While I'm sure Elon would very much not like to see a batch of 60 Starlink satellites go up in a ball of flames, it would certainly be preferable to seeing a paying customer's $75 million satellite being obliterated, or even worse, a manned launch with a booster malfunction. It's super exciting to see these life leader boosters, as Elon calls them, making history with their record-breaking reflights, especially when you think back just a few years and everyone in the industry was saying it couldn't be done at all. Hats off to you, Elon. Keep proving them wrong. Speaking of Starlink, we got word this week that the FCC has granted permission on the company's request to fly their satellites at lower altitudes. This is huge for performance. When you think of traditional satellite internet providers, anyone who's used them before probably doesn't have very good things to say about them. Between data caps, high latency, and weather outages, they are less than ideal. With Starlink getting permission to fly at lower altitudes, this will only enhance the already class-leading performance. They may not be able to combat weather outage issues, but they sure as heck should be able to provide the bandwidth and latency for underdeveloped rural areas that don't have access to land-based broadband connections. 
This will surely be fantastic news to console and PC gamers in rural areas, but more importantly, this will undoubtedly help third world nations gain access to better education. Let us know down in the comments if you use or have used satellite internet and whether or not you plan to use Starlink in the future. Next up, we have two stories out of China. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, although I'm not so sure it's looked upon so friendly in the business community. Ars Technica ran a story this week covering China's National Space Day, where the country showed off a rocket designed from state-owned rocket manufacturer CALT. Even before we gave Hubble the new lens that fixed its focusing issue, it would have been able to spot the similarities between China's new heavy-lift rocket design and SpaceX's Starship. It's no secret that SpaceX has been developing Starship for some time now. They have events to discuss it, they live stream it, and as covered in last week's video, there's even a small space city forming at Boca Chica to cover Starship's development in real time. I suppose we had to know this was coming. The question is whether or not China has the technology to pull this off. It appears from the slides that China is also planning on flying the first stage of the rocket back to Earth and presumably propulsively landing it. SpaceX has been having some trouble as of late sticking the landing on their test flights of Starship, so it begs the question of whether or not China will be able to do any better. It sure would be a huge help if they were capable of building this rocket, as the next story on our flight schedule is China building their own space station. According to CBS News on Wednesday, China launched the first module of their new space station aboard a Long March 5B rocket. The article goes on to state that at least 10 more launches are planned over the next two years to put at least two additional 20-ton research modules into orbit, deliver supplies as well as astronauts, eventually giving the Chinese an operational space station of their own. One other item of note is that the Long March 5B that lofted this first module into orbit is planned to make an uncontrolled re-entry sometime over the next few days or weeks. Gravity is slowly pulling on the core stage of this rocket, and it's currently unknown when or where the rocket will eventually re-enter the atmosphere. It's possible it could come in over a populated area, and this wouldn't be the only time a Chinese rocket had rained down on a population, but that's another story for another day. Make sure to get subscribed so you know if there will be rockets falling on your head. At this point, it's basically a health hazard to not be subscribed. You've been warned. Last on the flight schedule for this week's episode is one of the wildest planes I've ever seen. On first glance, it looks like two planes. Then it looks like one plane that has accidentally had a mid-air collision and become stuck to another plane. Then finally, your eyes realize what you're seeing and you're worried someone has drugged you. Where are the mushrooms that Billy had left over from the last music festival anyway? This odd-looking plane is actually part of a launch system. Most rockets launch in multiple stages. Once the first stage has used all of its fuel, it will drop off and crash back down to Earth, allowing the rocket to shed weight. This is the only way to successfully make it to orbit since the Earth has such a strong gravity well. Using a plane like this, the rocket can potentially forego a stage as strapping it to the underside of this plane and carrying it at 30,000 feet in the air before ignition gives it quite a leg up versus launching from the ground. This isn't the first time we've seen an implementation of this type. Virgin Galactic uses a repurposed Boeing 747 named Cosmic Girl to do the exact same thing and has done so for some time now. Strata Launch has named this plane Rock, spelled R-O-C. I'm not sure if that's short for rocket, as it was originally planned to help launch rockets, or if they didn't have high hopes for it during the design phase and thought it might sink like a rock rather than fly. According to Space.com, the aircraft features a 385-foot wingspan, and it took off from Mojave Air and Space Port for this second flight, which lasted 3 hours and 14 minutes to gather some very valuable data. Rock reached an altitude of 14,000 feet and a top speed of just 199 miles per hour. Unlike Cosmic Girl, Strata Launch has decided it would rather use this plane to launch hypersonic missiles rather than rockets, and they're currently developing their own family of hypersonic vehicles to use with Rock. It's such a neat looking oddity that I hope testing goes well so that we can see more of it in the future. And that's going to do it for this week's episode. Do you think China will be successful with their Starship clone? Also, as I mentioned above, let us know if you're using Starlink or plan to do so. Blast off in the comments below. Please dominate that like button if you enjoyed this week's episode and consider getting subscribed if you aren't already so you don't miss any glorious space news. And so that you can be warned when there's a chance of rockets raining on your head. I appreciate you watching and we will see you in the next one.